Hi everyone, Rachel Pico here with Life Abundant Ministries. I wanted to come to you tonight. Um, we just had our conference this last weekend and it was absolutely wonderful. It was everything that God had planned for it to be. And so we are so excited about that. And, um, you know, I was praying earlier today and then after that I was talking with Bryce and we were, we were talking about, okay, what's the next step? What are, what are we called to next? What are we going to do next? Because there's always a next thing that's right in front of you. And so after praying about it and talking about it, we had found that we were in front of a blank slate. And I said, you know, I think there's a lot of people who don't realize the goodness that God has planned for them. And it's kind of a strange concept to, maybe it's a cultural thing, but it's a strange concept that somebody, especially if you don't know God, if you don't know the heart of God, to, to, for him to believe and want and desire good things for you. You know, he, he has plans for us and, and plans to prosper us and plans for us to have an expected end and a future. And I'm always telling our girls, I'm like, God is looking to bless you. He wants good things for your lives. And, you know, earlier, um, years and years ago, early in my Christian walk, somebody, uh, I, had, I had recently rededicated my life to Christ and somebody sat down with me and they talked with me and I think it was supposed to be a very comforting talk and it wasn't. It was, it did not sound good. And the words that they used, they said, you know, your life is God's now. And um, I, I think ownership was implied and uh, just that, that whatever he wants to do with your life, he's going to do and you just need to give him permission and, and that that's just how your life is going to be now. He's going to, um, you know, essentially he's going to be in charge of your life. And as someone who has a little bit of a problem with authority, that was not good news. I was not excited about that. What I didn't know was that when, when God wants to order your steps, he's, he's got a plan for you. He's got something good and exciting. You know, the, the reason that you want to, to do a certain thing or you want to be a certain way, it's because God's put seeds inside of you to, to do those things. So if, for instance, somebody told me that God had called me to be um, an auto mechanic and have a, an auto shop, and I was going to just, you know, fix cars, and um, I was going to be the best mechanic that there was, and then I, that was going to be how I would spread the gospel of Jesus, that people would come in, and I would bless them with my good work, and like, even as I'm talking about it, this does not at all sound appealing to me, and... <laughs> And so thank God that that's not what he's called me to do. Thank God he has called me to speak and teach people that um, he has called me to, uh, to enrich people's lives and, and lift them up to the Lord. And I love the idea of getting up in front of a thousand people and speaking. I, I love that. And I know so many people who are like, that is not anywhere on the list for me. That's at the bottom of the list. I would rather be soaked in snakes and spiders. But God knew that. He put that in me. And so the, the, the reason that he put me on this planet is also the stuff that I'm going to like. It's the things I'm going to be good at that's going to make sense. And I think that that's just not communicated. And, you know, there are a lot of people out there who live their lives and they just think, well, I got to do what God said. Or, or it's just like it's going to be, you know, drudgery. And it's not. There's joy there's joy and there's fulfillment in doing what he has called you to do. Um, so I hope that that brings you a little bit of, of hope. Um, I was recently reminded of this vision that God had given me. And <clears throat> I, don't, I don't use that word lightly because I had been praying. And, um, and it was something that I just I, I saw. And I, I had been praying and talking and, and just kind of listening to the Lord. And in this conversation that I had, I just saw Jesus and he reached out and he took my hand and I was like, okay, where are we going to go? And I took his hand and we, um, you know, we whisked away somewhere and I found myself standing at a mountaintop right next to Jesus. And I'm, I'm looking at him and I'm thinking, this is scenic. This is nice. And I'm looking around and 
I can see for, you know, in this vision, I can just see for miles and miles, just as far as I can see. I mean, it was like the earth just went on forever. And, and I just kind of looked at Jesus and I said, you know, why are you showing me this? And I immediately understood that that was the place that, that Satan tempted him. When Satan took him to the mountaintop, when he was being tempted, Satan took him to the mountaintop and he said to him, I can give you all of this, all of the kingdoms and all of the riches. I can give you all of this. This can be yours. And it was, it was legitimately something that Satan could give because Adam and Eve had handed that over to him. It was legitimately uh, an offer. And uh, Satan knew who, who Jesus was. And he knew, he knew that he was a ruler. He knew where he came from. And Jesus was hungry and he was weary. And, and I understood that Jesus was able to look at the offer Satan had, had put in front of him. And, and all Satan wanted was for him to bow to him. That's all he said, you know, kneel to me, worship me. That's all he wanted. And, and Jesus knew that in that moment, if he kneeled to Satan, if he, if he bowed his knee to Satan, then he was giving up everything that God had planned for him. Because Jesus knew the plan. He knew why he was here. He knew there was redemption. And he knew that if he accepted this, this kingdom and the riches and everything that there is, he knew that that was it. And so I had this full understanding of this in like a moment. And Jesus just looked over at me. And I can't put it in words, but he just looked at me and he said, it wasn't enough. There's, there's no words to describe just the, the deadpan look. It wasn't enough. And I thought, what do you mean it wasn't enough? The, the, all of the world's kingdoms and all of the world's riches, it wasn't enough. What do you mean? Because he knew that it would mean not dying for us. And I just wept. Because we think so little of ourselves and, and we think that what we've been called to do and what we've been put on this planet to do is nothing. And we forget that God sent his best. He gave his only and he gave his best. And it was for everything. It was all of it. He was all in. And, and to, to suggest that when you become a Christian, that God suddenly wants something from you that is, um, servitude or, um, living a life of, of strife and unpleasantry is, it's an insult. You know, he has made us for a purpose. He has made us with a plan, with an end result in mind. And the joy that the Lord finds when you step into that role, because he knows you're fulfilled and he knows it's what you're made for. It's a wonderful exchange. <laughs> so... I hope that blesses you. I'm not much of a crier, but I cannot share that. I've, I've shared that vision with a few people and every time it brings me to tears because it's just, it's an unspeakable, un, uh, unattainable love of redemption. So consider, are you doing what he has put you on this planet to do? Because there should be joy in it, and there should be peace in it, and it should be what you're good at. Because all of us are called, all of us are called to, um, to something. And each of us has a gift that's just waiting to be unwrapped. So, 
Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in. I wanted to share that. And I hope that this blessed you. And thank you so much. Have a great weekend. We'll talk to you guys soon. Bye-bye.